Coming up, we'll be discussing Shayna Baszler's disappearance, the full backstage story behind why Daniel Bryan was fired, and the latest on Randy Orton. Starting off with Shayna Baszler, earlier in the week we talked about the crazy few months that Liv Morgan has had, but what about Shayna's last few months? Some may argue that it's even more frustrating than Liv's last few months. Shayna came into the main roster with so much hype. Shayna was all set for these major wins, but had each and every one of them ripped out of her hands at the very last second. Let's run through these wins that Shayna was supposed to have. Shayna was supposed to win the Women's Royal Rumble. She was supposed to become the Women's Champion and beat Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. And she was also highly rumored to win the Money in the Bank contract as well. Out of all three of those possible big wins, Shayna ended up with nothing at all. When Shayna was first coming on the main roster, everyone looked at her as the female version of Brock Lesnar for the women's division and another Ronda Rousey hard-hitting sort of competitor. And she did live up to that. It was just those losses that really made her lose a bit of momentum. Starting off with the Royal Rumble, the last two competitors of the women's match were Charlotte and Shayna Baszler. Charlotte won the match and went on to face Rhea Ripley for the NXT title. Even though Shayna lost the Rumble, she still managed to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. So either way, Charlotte Flair and Shayna both got their title match. Would it have been better for Shayna to win the Royal Rumble, earn her opportunity for the Raw Women's title, and Charlotte would still get her NXT title match? Of course, that was possible. That sounds actually much better than what they went with. What better way to establish a new big star in the women's division than having her come out and win the Royal Rumble match on her first real main roster appearance? That would have introduced Shayna as a real threat rather than a loser straight from the start. I think one of the best showings WWE ever put on of Shayna Baszler was at the Elimination Chamber. Shayna was walking right through everyone in that match and became the first superstar in history to eliminate every competitor in the Elimination Chamber match. That was never done in the 20 years history of that match. It's clear that Shayna was meant to look like this unbeatable monster in that match, and I think that's one of the best ways we've seen Shayna used so far on the main roster. But other than that, she hasn't done much. It's not like she was on a massive losing streak and was taken off of TV. Last time we saw Shayna, she was still as dominant as ever and picking up a lot of wins, but she just disappeared out of nowhere. That makes this disappearance so hard to understand. Shayna was winning matches, and she just vanishes? It doesn't make sense, but a lot of things in WWE don't make sense, so you really have to leave logic at the door when you're discussing WWE. There's no explanation for Shayna's disappearance. We're just left asking the same question that we always ask for all the NXT talents, and that's... Why were they even called up in the first place if there's no plans for them? If you weren't going to give her the Royal Rumble win, the WrestleMania win, the Money in the Bank win, then what was the point of Shayna Baszler coming to Monday Night Raw? Reports still don't know what's going on with Shayna. We just got our first Liv Morgan appearance in well over a month. So that's a start, but Shayna is still missing. There was even a point a few weeks ago that WWE moved Shayna's online profile to SmackDown and everyone was running with the headline of, Shayna is going to SmackDown. But after a few hours, they changed her profile back to Raw. So the fact that they're changing her profile so much lets us know that they don't know what to do with her, it seems. If WWE does realize that she'll do better off at SmackDown, then that is something they can do. WWE has introduced the idea of trading superstars lately, so they can come up with a real simple storyline explanation to shift Shayna to SmackDown. Another indicator that Shayna could be gone for a while longer is due to how much WWE is protecting Nia Jax. Nia Jax took two championship match losses in a matter of 48 hours, but it's to be noted that she was protected in both of these losses, so it looks like Nia could be saved for something else. Many reports think that Nia is being protected to serve as the major heel in the women's division since Shayna is nowhere to be found. Let's hope WWE finds something for Shayna Baszler. To do eventually. Our next story covers Daniel Bryan being fired. Yes, you heard that correctly. There's a lot of fans that aren't aware that WWE fired Daniel Bryan and originally cut ties with him in 2010 after he crossed the line on live TV. Now, in honor of the Nexus 10-year anniversary, 
We're getting more information on what happened during this time. Daniel Bryan was an original member of the Nexus, and WWE gave the Nexus some very specific instructions. WWE didn't tell them exactly what to do, but they just told them to go out there and cause havoc. Of course, these weren't the cleanest instructions, so the Nexus members went out there and did whatever they thought fit that description. That's when Daniel Bryan had the moment with the tie and Justin Roberts. Arn Anderson, who was working with WWE at the time, revealed a lot about what happened backstage with the firing of Daniel Bryan. Arn had this to say on his podcast. The second it went down and no one pre-warned the guy, I'm sure he was not thinking about it. It was always something that was part of the heel's repertoire, and if done properly, it's vicious. So that went down before anyone knew it. The guy in the big chair, Vince McMahon, saw it and probably lost it. Because it was clear that not even grabbing a guy with one hand was allowed. But it was too late in his mind. Arn finally heard all the commotion going on and went to take a look for himself. This is what he had to say about what he saw. I was backstage and from a distance I was eyeballing this thing and I could see this was a big deal. The blank look on Daniel Bryan's face told me he had no idea he had done anything wrong. He had certainly not done anything wrong on purpose. He was just sitting there with his eyes bugged out of his head going, what did I do? What did I do? He wasn't saying that, but if a VH1 bubble popped up in his head, that's what it would say. What did I do wrong? I just did what I was told. So it looks like Arn's comments confirmed the longtime rumor that Daniel Bryan was fired on the spot the second he went backstage. Daniel Bryan made a huge mistake. It all happened in the heat of the moment, and he thought he was doing what he was told to do but he crossed the line accidentally without even knowing it. Brian would still have a lot of support, and, and that's what led to WWE giving him a chance after the incident. That Daniel Bryan firing really changed WWE history forever. We didn't get to see Daniel Bryan as a member of the Nexus at all because of that firing, so it is a bit unfortunate because I would have loved to see what Daniel Bryan could have done in the Nexus. Lastly, we have Randy Orton. Randy's work lately has been absolutely amazing and deserves to be noticed. It feels like we went back in time to about 2009 and 2010 when Randy Orton was exactly the way he is right now. He was unpredictable, filled with so much character development, and truly a great storyteller. That's actually one of the criticisms Randy Orton had for the NXT roster. He believes that they do a lot of cool things in their matches. But they don't know really how to tell a story, and I absolutely agree with Randy Orton there. NXT is probably one of the best places to see amazing wrestling, but as far as actual time, in-depth storyline goes, they don't often have it. Even NXT superstars have come out about their storylines and said they don't like how it ended, so they basically agree as well. But you look at Randy Orton and what he did on Raw recently, and that's storytelling at its best. Sure, Christian vs. Randy Orton was an actual real match, but it did so much for the storyline and Randy Orton's character. It shows that Christian, a man who retired from injuries and shouldn't be competing, came out of retirement in honor of his best friend Edge, who is out for an injury for a long time. It shows that Christian is willing to risk it all to defend his best friend Edge. That says a lot about his character. Then on the flip side, you have Randy Orton, who punts Christian and wins that short match. But you can see that inner struggle with Randy Orton when he's watching Christian get medical attention and he's just saying things like, I didn't want to do this. You made me do this. Why are you even here right now? Just as a side note, that entire closing moment of Raw with Randy Orton's music playing in the background and him going through that whole promo to Christian and the camera was absolutely brilliant as well. Whoever directed and produced that, we need more of that right there. That was just so perfect. Such a great way to close the show and continue the story. It also sounds like Randy is back in his phase of being a bit unstable, which everyone knows is the best version of Randy Orton. Even some of the things he was saying to Christian at the end of Raw sounded like some of the things that were running through his head. The character really was just speaking his thoughts and it made for one magical Raw moment. With Edge out of action, it looks like Christian could take the spot in the program with Randy Orton. Christian was forced into retirement as well a few years ago, but the fact that was even allowed to take part in that closing segment of Raw tells us that he's already been cleared for some sort of physical action, so that's a good sign there. 
But if Christian doesn't come back for that match, then I would assume that Randy is going to look for more legends to take out. What are your thoughts on this situation? Leave your comments, don't forget to subscribe, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.